it going on everybody uh thanks for joining us back at the channel uh today we have a pretty special project uh this 2020 gmc at4 uh i was pretty amped up on it so i was like we gotta film a video for this one so it's kind of a unique project not for us but for you guys to first see this that there's no real end goal it's just more of our creative side being what should we do next what what's going to be the most functional what's going to be the coolest look and that's the ones we like the best so i figured you'd grab you and show you what was going on with that the first step the first part that i know is going on here is this four inch cognito lift the customer gave us two specifications that it was the best and that it wasn't too high so i did my research through bds through ready lift through Cognito, through Kelderman. And this is what I thought was the best option for this truck. Four inch Cognito lift with the Fox Reservoir shocks. Got the upper control arms, got the tie rod ends, got the steering, idler, and pitman arm reinforcements. And I mean, if you're gonna ask my opinion on lifts, I just think Cognito does the best for this specific truck. The third requirement that the customer had is that we made the truck ready for whatever. So to make it ready for whatever, that meant any load. So to me, that meant from driving at the Home Depot with the wife and kids to a mud bogging trip down in Tennessee. So I recommend it. We did uh, the airlift bags in the rear to make that for any type of load that we added, whether that be a cap, a rack, a tent, all that's still undecided at this point. But we're gonna be ready for that. And I also got the rear airbag cradles from Daystar, not to limit the travel. So just some things that we've thought about some, so far, things we're still thinking about, and um, hopefully I'll be able to get this thing started and get it ready for you. So I'm getting these shocks over here. First thing I gotta recommend is bring your gloves. Because we, if you've ever worked on a GM truck late model, we know they have the worst frame coating system on earth. Get together, GM. So though this is considered a, a four inch lift, I don't know why they describe them as that on any torsion truck, because it's really, I would say a three to five. The optimal setting for them is going to be four inches of lift. But you're controlling the lift height with those torsion bolts. So if you see any BDS, ready lift, rough country, and it says a strict number, that's a guesstimate. Because the person installing the lift is really the one setting it to the correct lift height. So they're all adjustable. So, of course, with any torsion bar truck, you're gonna have to unload the, the torsion bars usually to get this center pin out. Sometimes you can get it out without it, but nope. This is the tool I recommend. This is the OTC 7832. This is what the dealership would use. Now you want to make sure you keep those threads clean and lubed when you're using it because it is fine thread. But this is what works the best. I wouldn't recommend anything else. And it's not that hard to find. I got mine off of Amazon. Works every time. 50% of the time. Okay. Okay. I would say the biggest thing that separates uh, the full blown lift compared to like a level kit is usually you're, you're spacing everything down. So you're spacing the diff down, you're spacing the control arm pockets down to give you those factory angles. So that's what I'm doing right now, I'm pulling the diff out. Um, 
so I can get we can get all those angles correct. I'm about to grab Beefcake Tony over there. And he's gonna help me grab it out of here as soon as I get these bolts loose. Put a little hustle behind this muscle. Just we'll prop it up, we'll get the stand out there and are you ready? You alright? Yep. She's a heavy one. Okay. okay. Easy peasy. Why can't they all do that easy? They never do. Thank you. I'll let you know when I'm going back up. Wednesday morning here. Um, we had a little bit later of a night than we were planning on. I did get some more stuff installed, um, such as the sway bar, the sway bar links, the, the skid plates, the upper control arms. I got the torsion bars back in there, um, lower control arms. So I got a little bit more accomplished. Not as much as I'd like to, but hopefully I'll be wrapping up the lift today. About to get everything put back together and hopefully get onto that airlift system. We're juggling a couple projects here, just trying to make sure everybody's satisfied, you know what I mean? So, let's get to work, let's crack the energy drinks. Ah! Most of the time, 90% of the work on these lift kits is in the front. The rear is usually pretty simple. Block, new U-bolts, bump stop extender, new shocks. You're talking 20 minutes of work tops. Um, on this, it's a little different because of the weight we don't know and we want to be prepared for anything. We're adding an airbags helper setup. So it's going to be fun. Let's get going. Whenever you're installing one of these blocks, you want to see if there's any angle to them because it'll change the angle of the pinion. So looking at this one, flat. So no worries, it could go in any way, either side. And I know some people out there will say, blocks on this big build, that's kind of whack. Well, I personally called Deaver and talked to their uh, technical assistants and they could not provide any leaf springs that worked on the 2020. Sierra HD, so I said, I think they're pretty much the same. They were like, I can't guarantee it. So we're just doing a block for now. Down the road, you might be seeing an update video where you see me putting leaf springs in the same spot. My least favorite tool, but my like one of the most necessary tools. Don't hate this thing. Definitely got one ER visit off of it. Let's not make it another.
of last piece of the puzzle is due to this vehicle, we want to make sure that it could be ready for anything and anywhere. Um, a normal airbag is attached at the top and the bottom. So when you're hitting bumps, you're actually reducing your wheel travel. So instead of that, uh, we had got this Daystar spacer, which basically is a cradle for the bottom so that the airbag's never attached, but it always gives that support when it needs to. So just to make sure the ride's as best as it can and so has that extra uh, weight support, that's what we decided to go with. Usually you would put this on whenever you did a rear lift. This is a bump stop relocator. So since you lifted the rear two inches, you also have to account for the two inches of travel for the bump stop. So you would put this on there to account for it. What that's gonna give you is a harsher ride and a no more load capacity. So what we chose to do was instead of with a airlift helper bag system, so we're going to install that so we could add all the weight we want and make sure it's as stable as possible. I got all my suspension put on there, the air lift put on there. It all figured out. Time to get the wheels on there. All this thing at night. Line in the morning and let Kevin take over. <laughs> <laughs>